I'm with Mayor Brian Smith, uh, Wasaga Beach, uh, and I, I, I can't forget to say it's the longest freshwater beach in, in the world. Uh, we're in the throes of the heat of the summer. We're in the middle of August. You're a very busy man, so first of all, thank you for taking the time to be with me. My pleasure, Frank. Um, we did have a, a scheduled meeting uh, for yesterday that's been bumped up to September 19th. It's one of our uh, open forum meetings that we are hosting uh, two or three times a year where uh, anybody can come out, come up to the mic and ask any question you wish, and uh, we'd be more than happy to answer that question with the, uh, as, uh, the best answer we can possibly give you, that of course will be uh, truthful and factual. Uh, so it, it's not about the beachfront specific. You can ask any question about anything. We decided to do this uh, about uh, six, eight months ago uh, because uh, there's misinformation and disinformation out there. We thought, what better way than to just have an open forum where myself, uh, the CAO, and the entire senior leadership team will be there at the table. Uh, and you can ask whatever question about whatever or voice your concerns. We're there to listen, we're there to hear, and to give you the best answers uh, that we possibly can that will be truthful and factual. You've had some conversations with the province of Ontario and the ministry. Um, we have a, essentially we have a neighbour, and that neighbour is of the largest size it has anywhere near any community. Um, give us an update on what's going on there. You want them to invest a little more specifically in what way? Yeah, so we're talking about the MECP in the province of Ontario, who is our partners, uh, and we're talking about the provincial park. Wasaga Beach Provincial Park is uh, one of their largest uh, provincial parks, uh, certainly uh, their largest by visitation. It sees more visitors, I think, than any other provincial park at this point in time, uh, and is their most profitable provincial park. Uh, when I say profitable, it doesn't mean they're making fistfuls of, fist, uh, fulls of money. It means they're, they're bringing in revenue that's helping to maintain and look after uh, the park. Um, what a lot of folks don't understand is that uh, it's called the Wasaga Beach Provincial Park. Uh, and so anything that happens within the provincial park, which is the beachfront, as you know, Frank, from the curb, all of the sand to the water, people uh, automatically assume it's the town of Wasaga Beach. Well, it isn't. It's the, it's the province of Ontario. And uh, Minister Kanjan is the minister of the MECP currently, and her and I did have a an opportunity along with MPP Brian Saunderson and some staff to uh, have his, uh, a Teams meeting uh, last Friday and we had some discussion around our concerns and of course this all came up because of our TikTok uh, um, uh, video that went out uh, by a young lady here in Wasaga Beach that uh, uh, although it brought attention to a problem that's happening uh, all over not just in Wasaga Beach um, it was not, uh, I don't want to say it was misleading, but it certainly wasn't factual. I mean, it, it led people to believe, I think, that they had to watch where they were walking because they might step in something they don't want to. And that is, couldn't be further from the truth. Listen, there are bad actors no matter where you go and no matter what you're talking about. Uh, and Wasaga Beach uh, has its share of bad actors no different than anywhere else. But it is not an epidemic by any stretch of the imagination. It is not something that is, uh, you know, that you need to be very careful where you walk. Um, and, or where uh, your children or dig. Or where your children <laughs> dig or are playing. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I've said it before, we're one of the cleanest beaches uh, in the world. Uh, when other beaches are closed, and we just heard last night on the news that several beaches in the area are closed due to high bacteria, Wasaga Beach Provincial Park in the town of Wasaga Beach, our beach is open. Uh, it is the longest freshwater beach in the world, however, and, and I think that that's something very, very special. No one else can have that. Nobody, ever. Uh, and so I believe that uh, if this was anywhere else in the world, uh, federally, provincially, and of course municipally, we'd be doing everything we can to keep this gem the absolute gem that it is. And so I just uh, had this, uh, we had a meeting with Minister Kanchin. She heard us, she understood the concerns. Uh, she's assured us she's going to be working to make improvements. Uh, and we have more talks to have, and uh, we'll do that in the not too distant future, I'm confident. Um, at the end of the day, um, again, what's important is that A, uh, people understand that the information out there is not all accurate. And uh, B, that the, the big concern here, or a bigger concern here, is the amount of emails that I received after that, um, that were not very nice emails. Um, listen, we live in a very uh, inclusive country. We live in the best country in the world. And, and I like to say that if you're in Wasaga Beach, 
you're in the best municipality in the best province in the best country in the world. And uh, we all need to get along. We all need to treat each other with respect, whether we agree or disagree. Um, what I've seen is not uh, uh, um, reflective of that. And, and it's, uh, that's the part that really concerns me. And so uh, at the end of the day, um, we'll work through this. We've asked, uh, as you know, a motion I put forward at our last council meeting asking them to adopt the same type of rule that we have in our bylaw, no enclosed tents on the beach. Um, that's a little more difficult, I understand, for them because the provincial park is one big entity and uh, it's not like you can just change one thing here and not there. They have to work around that and, and to make that happen. But I'm confident at this point uh, that Minister Kanjin and her staff uh, are uh, looking at this and uh, they have assured us that uh, immediately they would be stepping up uh, a the amount of maintenance and repair being done in the provincial park in Wasaga Beach uh, and that they would be adding staff in order to make sure that the garbage is better under control within the provincial park. You know the provincial park um, was created uh, back in the late 60s early 70s uh, to be a recreational park for the people of Ontario um, and uh, back then the Ministry of uh, lands and forest and then became the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry spent millions of dollars uh, to create the provincial park which was a beautiful gem. Um, unfortunately since that time it has uh, constantly eroded and decayed and and now we're at a time where very little has been done. Nancy Island is part of that park and uh, you know Nancy Island is such a important historical site it's such a huge part of the history of Canada. It's one of the main reasons why we are a British colony and not an American colony. A battle was truly fought where Nancy Island is today, uh, where Lieutenant Miller Worsley uh, uh, commanded the schooner ship Nancy. Um, that ship was sunk uh, in the Nottawasaga River. He and some First Nations peoples and a few staff uh, and crew that he had left paddled from the Nottawasaga River where the Nancy is today, to Fort Michigan Mackinac. Um, and, uh, you know, then commandeered some American ships and, and the war went on and, and of course uh, the British won that war and here we are today. So, um, you know, Nancy Island is uh, something that is near to dear to me in my heart. I went there probably on a daily basis many weeks and if not a weekly basis every summer as a kid. I could recite most of uh, the movie that plays in the three-dimensional theater. And I have a, a good understanding and, and uh, love and, and uh, respect uh, for that island and why it's here. It's been left, uh, unfortunately, to uh, decay and it's in a major state of disrepair. And uh, we need to get that fixed. And so I believe, uh, and I think this council believes, that um, Nancy Island and perhaps the provincial park should be uh, in a different ministry. It should be with the Ministry of Tourism. Um, if we look at Discovery Harbor and Penetang, St. Marie among the Hurons, many other uh, types of these venues, um, they are with the Ministry of Tourism. They are uh, treated and dealt with and looked after in a much different way. Um, and because the park was created as a um, recreational park, I quite, quite frankly, I believe the whole park should actually be uh, with the Ministry of Tourism. Um, another good example of that is uh, is uh, Niagara Falls. It's in the Ministry of Tourism's hands and uh, and they deal with it in a very different way. But either way, we'll work together as we always do. Uh, I've said it many times. Uh, you know, I've had people say to me, why why don't why aren't you screaming and yelling? And, and I'll say it again, uh, politics is really a lot like life. It's about building relationships, not tearing them down. And sometimes you got to get a little more uh, crass and a little more dis um, direct. Um, but at the end of the day, I think we're all in this together. We all understand how important Wasaga Beach um, and Nancy Island uh, are uh, to uh, this province, and uh, I'm confident that we'll, we'll do better. We're heading off to AMO um, this uh, next week, uh, and we have uh, several meetings set up with several different ministries, uh, and um, do have a, a meeting uh, now set up uh, for myself to sit down and have a uh, a uh, brief uh, but important discussion with the Premier Ford. So um, certainly the province is hearing us and they're listening and we're going to do everything we can to continue to build those relationships to move Wasaga Beach forward in a positive, sustainable, affordable manner. I understand the need for shade when you're on the beach. 
I understand that. That's the only point I want to make is I understand shade. And I also understand from listening to a lot of the residents, the, the, the other reason they don't like the tents, I guess there's a bias also because people want to see the beach. And then if you have a whole whack of tents like we've had from time to time, you go to sit at the beach and all you're seeing is the back of a tent. Um, I suppose that's something that, that the province could control as far as the distance from the beach where they could put those, I guess. I don't know, because that's what bothers people. And you know, I thought about it because I, I think like many of us, um, well, this, this is a good segue to Beach Drive. Um, I enjoy driving down Beach Drive and just looking at the beach and seeing all the activity and seeing how much fun people are having and always like knowing that anybody that hasn't been to Wasaga Beach gets a chance to drive by and actually see the glory that is the longest freshwater beach in the in the world. And and it, it's sort of a, a commercial that you don't have to pay for, that people go there and have a look. So let's talk about Beach Drive. How happy are you uh, that it's back together? I know you have the challenges of the sand blowing up like the, uh, a couple of days ago. I thought I was in a sandstorm when I was like, told you I drive along the beach and I saw the sandstorm, the challenges that you have keeping it open and why, and, and are the reasons why you opened it still there? And are there even reasons you've discovered that have made it like for me, there's more reasons why it should be open in my mind, but I just wanted to hear your input on that. Yeah, so, I mean, I think the people of Wasaga Beach were very, very clear uh, during election time that they wanted Beach Drive open. They wanted to be able to go down there like you do and drive the beach all year long, not just in the summer, but all year long. And to sit there, have a coffee or an ice cream or a dinner uh, and uh, enjoy the beautiful sunsets. We have the most beautiful sunsets in the world here. Uh, and so um, the decision was absolutely the right decision to reopen Beach Drive. Um, why it was ever closed in the first place, I, I, I just don't understand. I get the high water, but we've had high water before. Um, it is a, a very important part of our uh, tourism. It's an important part of our day-to-day -day life in Wasaga Beach, and it's an important part of our economy. So I... I stand here today and say it's absolutely the right decision. I couldn't have been more happy that we did it and still still am. Um, and so there'll be some changes come forth for Beach Drive, as you know, as the development happens, we're gonna raise it up five feet. That's gonna help with the sand problem. Um, but sand is, uh, it's a problem, but I guess a good problem to have. It's, uh, it's important that it's a relic beach and that we work together with the ministry to put that back on the beach because once it's gone, it's gone. Um, but at the end, and there's a cost to all of that. And we, you know, I've heard of late that, you know, there's more taxpayers dollars being spent to clean up sand and, and to do whatever, and to have, you know, some concerts and, and things happening, uh, in the summer and, and throughout the year. Um, but every municipality does this and, and we do it because it's a vital role of the municipality to do these types of things, to attract, uh, people to Wasaga Beach who will come here and we'll enjoy our town, and we'll spend money, and we'll support our businesses. I challenge anyone to go out and speak to businesses and ask if they'd be happy if they didn't have the summertime tourism or tourism period. I would bet you that 99.9999% of the businesses would tell you couldn't live without it. And so there's a cost to that. And uh, just like there's a cost to any municipality uh, doing anything that promotes uh, the municipality but it's the right thing to do. And we're gonna to continue to do that. We're looking at doing it in, in a different way, uh, in some fashions where we can start to generate revenues, to put back, in, back into the pockets of taxpayers so it's not a direct cost and 100% cost. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> we're confident that that will work. Uh, but we're getting that set up and uh, you know, as we move forward and, and the new uh, Wasaga Beach Sports and Entertainment Corporation gets going, I think we'll be able to stand here hopefully in a year and say, you know what, this is what we did, did and this is how much revenue it's generated that we didn't have before. Uh, is it going to replace all the revenue? Probably not. But replacing any of it as opposed to it all being on the backs of the taxpayer is important. What's also important to note, though, is that these events attract people and that helps people. Um, and helps the taxpayer, helps the businesses, and it's important. Economic development. Tourism, I would say probably worldwide today, is the number one economic driver anywhere. Why did we need a new, a new corporation to... We needed to put it into a, a, a proper uh, Ontario corporation because a municipality is not allowed to make money. 
um, we're allowed to break even. We're allowed to charge people for all the costs. But the municipality is not allowed to make money, make a profit. Um, this is a way that a municipality um, um, can have a third party, much the same as Wasaga Distribution gives us dividends every year. Uh, it's why it's a completely separate entity. Um, this is very much the same way. This is another uh, um, uh, independent corporation that will uh, the taxpayer will be the shareholder of, and those uh, revenues will then come back to us that way. How do people learn about what they're doing and how much it costs and how much they're making? Do we have uh, a way to see what's going on? Do residents have an understanding of what they're spending, where the money's going, how much they're collecting? Sure. So we've been very open and transparent about that, uh, that the town is actually uh, giving $500,000 of seed money. Uh, from casino funds uh, that will get paid back to the town uh, along with profits uh, and uh, that's uh, basically where the town stands from uh, an investment standpoint and that's not it's not an investment it's a short-term investment I'd say uh, but to be completely repaid okay. so no loss to the taxpayer and then just like uh, as I say Wasaga distribution annual statements uh, and financials will be prepared by chartered accountants uh, and uh, that will be audited, no doubt, uh, and that will be public information for, uh, for the general public to see. They'll also uh, be able to see what that organization is doing uh, because they'll be advertising the different concerts and things that they're doing. Um, and uh, on an annual basis, there'll be a report comes to council that uh, will be open and transparent for the public to see. We have, um, we have like you were talking about the beach and the sand <clears throat> hitting the, the road and then having to have expenses to keep it clean. I guess the key is what I'm hearing from you is you try to turn that expense into a into an investment towards a profit. In other words, take something like that. You can't just automatically look at something and say, oh, it costs this much. One has to also look down the line on where it takes you if you go that way, which is why I asked about Beach Drive and where it sits today. Um, I guess, um, what I didn't hear from you, and I'm, I'm, I'll say it, I'm not ashamed to say it, is that it has really opened up the community a bit. Uh, I know a lot of people, I have a, a very close friend that didn't like the idea of Beach Drive being open because she was worried about the safety. She has now seen it and she, she feels that she made a mistake. A lot of things that you do are like that. You'll do something, you'll make a decision, council will make a decision. Um, how does how do you guide yourselves and how does council guide itself to ensure that as much as you can, as I said about the beach, it's not a cost anymore. It becomes an investment if you use the beach correctly, the bigger picture. How difficult is it to do that? And what are some of the things that you would tell the residents, taxpayers, to help be patient and understand that some of the stuff you're doing, there's a longer term goal that isn't as clear at day one, like a five hundred thousand dollar investment or whatever seed money. Or, sure. um, how, how do you how do you feel residents should think about stuff like that? How could you help them to understand and be more patient? Well, the first thing I'd say: Could you imagine, um, <clears throat> uh, Frank, if you if you never cut your grass, uh, or you never swept your driveway, uh, or you never you know cleaned your home, where you'd end up? Um, it's a cost but it's an investment. It's an investment current and into the future. Uh, it's very difficult uh, from a municipality standpoint because we're very limited on what we can and can't do. And it's all dictated by the Municipal Act of Ontario. Uh, so um, anytime we do something like form the Wasaga Beach uh, Sports and Entertainment Corporation, be rest assured that A, our experts who are our staff have done the homework, they've got legal opinions, they've uh, spoken perhaps with the province uh, or whomever to make sure it's something we can do. Uh, we've run the numbers to make sure that a profit can be made, uh, I've done the business plan. Um, and then of course staff come back to council, council listens to staff, and then council has to make a decision whether they agree with staff or they don't, and whether they move forward or they don't. It's not any different here than it is in every other municipality, 444 municipalities in Ontario. It's the way it works. Um, so, um, when we make decisions, uh, I can tell you that this council um, makes educated decisions that we believe is going to be best, uh, first and foremost, for the taxpayers of Wasaga Beach. 
Um, I think just about every member of this council ran on that, on being community first oriented. And so we're doing that. But government moves slowly, no matter what level. Um, and um, often, uh, municipally, you're dependent on the provincial uh, level of government or the federal level of government and many other outside entities before you can actually make things happen and do things. And that takes time. Um, so, you know, what I will tell you is that any decision this council makes is not just short term, it's short, mid and long term. What are the ramifications today? What will they be in a year from now? And what will they be if this continues four, five, six years down the road when it's a new council in place? Uh, every four years we have a new council. And we also try to do things that we believe new councils will be supportive of. So is that we don't see what Wasaga Beach has seen so many times in the last four or five councils where there's constant change over. Um, and I would say four or five, probably the last three to four. And so um, we're cognizant of that. Listen, uh, two things we all hate in life, change in the way things are, Frank. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I believe that completely. And change is very difficult for most, um, but we're also not happy as it is. Council has some tough decisions that we make on a regular basis that will move our town forward in a positive, sustainable, and affordable manner. Um, but there are investments that need to be made. River Road West is a perfect example of that. Uh, this section of River Road West, I think, is somewhere in that $18 million range. It's a lot of money, but it has to be done. And then there's more to be done. And we've got to go from you know 45th Street to the roundabouts, and we've got to then continue out to the outskirts of town in the east end. Um, you know, we've always got water and sewer uh, changes and upgrades that we are making. And, and, and many councils in this municipality have done a great job at that and making sure that we have the reserves uh, and the ability to do that and look after our assets. Long-term and short-term asset planning is something that this municipality is doing on a regular basis. So when we look at um, the investments that will be made in Beach Drive to raise it up, uh, to uh, increase the capacities of water and sewer in that area. These are all things that we will see expense for up front, but we're going to receive a lot of DCs that will pay for most of that, all that can be paid at a DCs, because, you know, there's a misnomer that d development pays for development. Well, that is true, but there are rules around what DCs can and can't be used for. Um, Open up DC, explain that. Development for the charges. Good, so thank you. So every, every uh, developer, uh, any individual uh, that builds something new, uh, there are development charges associated with that, or they're based on per square meter. Um, and there are, there are also uh, uh, county development charges as well, as well as education tax and so on, park in lieu of, you, na you name it. Uh, this all gets paid by the developer to the municipality, and then the municipality has guidelines we have to follow in order to use that. But what we know is that when the DCs are received and they're paid when the development starts, unless the different agreements have been made, um, that will pay for the vast majority. Uh, and we also know, though most importantly, is it's going to create a lot more commercial, a lot more residential, that is only going to increase our tax base. And what's important to understand is to increase the tax base is one thing, but to increase the tax dollars we receive per linear foot of road is what's most important. You know, Wasaga Beach has seen sprawl for many, many years, and it's, it's why, you know, uh, we struggle uh, with our tax base because, um, A, it's 95% residential, uh, which is very low. We'd like a higher commercial. We're working on that. Um, but we have uh, a lot of, uh, our town is very linear. We have a lot of roads. So what we're hoping to do is to, um, you know, cover um, more density in, in shorter um, distances so is that there's more tax dollars per linear foot, which is only going to help um, reduce taxes and reduce that burden um, gradually on residents as we move forward. It's not going to happen overnight, but that's the plan, and I think we're on the right uh, right path to get there. Progress was the next thing I wanted to talk to, but just with the corporation, the entertainment corporation, there are a lot of historical promoters, 
uh, people that do stuff here. How do you think that'll impact them? Uh, is there a consideration for maintaining some of the history, like for example, the Blues Festival, that kind of stuff? Absolutely. Uh, listen, the town has always has been uh, uh, my council for sure, and this council, uh, my last council, and this council have always been very open to that. Anyone who wants to come to a Saga Beach and host an event, we're very open to that, uh, providing it, it it fits and it works, uh, and that the event organizers have the wherewithal to do what they say they're going to do. Um, so that's not going to change at all. It's, you know, the Blues Fest is a separate entity. They'll continue with Blues Fest. Hopefully, it only just gets bigger and better, and the town will be there to assist and help in any way we can with those types of events as well. Progress is, is always an important thing. There's a 500 unit building being put up and a lot of people are concerned about that. We all love progress until it knocks on our door. Um, your, your view on, on that uh, topic? Well, again, the way, two things we all hate change in the way things are. <laughs> um, progress is one of those things that we can't stop. Um, and again, um, I, I'm assuming you're talking about development in the West End. Yes, in the West End. Um, but I can tell you it's not just the West End. It doesn't matter where development comes, where it's going to be new and it affects uh, people who have lived there for quite some time. Um, there's always pushback. Uh, and I understand it. Um, and so council's job is to make sure that the densities um, and the development is um, a fits in with Saga Beach. But more importantly, what people have to understand is council's hands are tightly tied. Um, if the developer coming forward is presenting something that fits within the official plan and meets all of the zoning and planning requirements of the province, if that's the case, um, council could say no and fight. But what we've learned at many municipalities and councils in this municipality over the years is we'll spend hundred and fifty, two hundred and fifty, three hundred thousand dollars of taxpayers' money to fight and we'll lose. Just about everything. What are you saying? Time. We shouldn't waste money on fighting losing battles? Is that what you're trying well, to suggest? Well that's exactly what I'm <laughs> saying. Uh, if we if we are quite certain that by fighting something we're gonna lose, do taxpayers want us to spend, you know, hundred and fifty to three hundred thousand dollars on that? because uh, we could do it every development comes along, I promise you that. Um, so what we try to do is to work with the developer to get those numbers to something that is more palatable, uh, something that is more fitting in uh, the community that is surrounding it. Um, listen, I get it. I, I certainly wouldn't want a five-story, six-story, ten-story building in my backyard if I lived somewhere for three, four, five, ten years and never expected that would happen. But there's also an onus on people when they buy their properties to, to do their due diligence and to understand what those zonings are and what could or couldn't happen there. Um, but at the end of the day, I completely understand, this council completely understands, I'm confident, the concerns of residents in different neighborhoods, whether it be Wasaga Sands, whether it be the far west end, whether it be the, est, the east end here, uh, where there's development happening. Our job on council is to make sure they meet all the criteria and make sure that they uh, do what they say they're going to do no more uh, and no less, and uh, to try and get that to fit as best we can, and to negotiate with those developers. And our staff do that on a regular basis. Um, but developers, they understand the rules as good or better than we do. Uh, and, um, you know, back to your initial point, um, you know, we often hear, well, you're cutting down another tree to build another home. Well, I, just about every home in Wasaga Beach had to have a tree or two cut down to build it. That's progress. And we see it a lot. We see a lot of people move to Wasaga Beach because they come here to vacation and they see this beautiful, serene, quiet little town and then they move here and they don't want it to change. <laughs> it changed for them to move here, mm -hmm. <laughs> but they don't want it to change again. And you know, that's just human nature. We, we all think the same way. We want what's best for us. Um, as the mayor, I have to look at what's best for the community as a whole, uh, as does council. And again, I, I can't say it enough, I am confident that this council is going to do what's best uh, for the community as a whole each and every time. Well, you've always said uh, votes have consequences. So, um, yeah, well, but we've taken more time than I intended and you've given me much more time than I, than I have I had a right to ask. So I appreciate you doing this. Uh, Mayor Brian Smith of Wasego Beach, uh, I'm Candid Frank. Uh, if you 
want to follow what's going on in the town, you can go to their website and you can see what's going on. And again, a reminder, there's an open discussion, as you mentioned, as we mentioned at the top of the program that goes September 19th, where if you have any issues, the council is more than willing to hear. Council and town staff, for that matter, are willing to hear and respond to any of your questions. Thanks for doing this. Frank, again, my absolute pleasure. Have a great afternoon. You too. For Wasaga Wasega, I'm Candid Frank at the beach. If you want to contact us by email, email me at candidfrank at hotmail.com. Watch us and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Candid Frank Stanishi 1030 or message me on Facebook at Candid Frank Stanishi for any ideas or comments you have about the program. Thanks for watching, everybody. Until next time.